Hello and welcome to part three of Forest Falls. We finished the painting. So, hooray for that. And I uh, go into how I use my smaller brushes and what to determine to detail and what not to detail. What to have a sharp edge and when to have a loose edge. So that's all in part three. Um, I'm in the wide angle here right now because uh, some of you have asked to see some more of my equipment, how I do all this stuff. So as you probably guessed, this is my easel. I have my paper towels underneath, which I don't know if you can see or not. I brought down my studio lights. You can see them. They're just uh, Amazon type lights. They're really good. They can go from warm to cool, bright to dull. Really nice. And uh, this is my working space. And of course, here's my monitor. Here's where I put my originals over here, my plein airs, or my mock-ups for my bigger paintings. Like this one here was a mock-up a couple weeks ago for a bigger painting. And so I did it with that. So it's good to have your mock-up and then go big. And that's exactly what I'm going to do uh, with uh, Forest Falls. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to start this painting that's going to be uh, you know bigger. And um, I'll be putting that over here in my shod box. Just right to kind of hold the right angle. And I'll get my light up a little bit higher. I brought them down so you can see them. So that's my, um, that's my work cubicle. And uh, appreciate you coming by. So uh, let's get parted, started with part three. And thank you so much for hanging in there for one, two. And now get ready for number three, Forest Falls. Here we go. Hey, welcome to part three of uh, Forest Falls. So this is, I'm going to finish this thing today. Let's hope, hope, hope that everything turns out real good. One thing I saw when I came in this morning is that I think the drawing's fine. Things are in the right place. But I still don't have some of those values that I'd like to get. And I see it in this area particularly. I need more darker, richer colors in this area. So that's where I'm going to start and then we'll get into the small brushes and practice with some of these little, little fine uh, branches. So with that, let's start with a mixture. Okay, so let's go with a little bit of blue and a lot of gray and I want some brown and some Viridian. I still don't have it. I'm going to get some more brown and blue. Blue. And I'm going to go some transparent oxide brown and really let's get a little darker on this thing. I'm kind of making this up as I go. I'm looking, I said, I gotta get this darker, add a little bit of alizarin to it, and I think we have a nice color. Let's see what happens. And I also need a dark dark, so let's go blue and brown and viridian. It's my dark dark. Oh, that's rich and wonderful. So we got light and we got dark. Let's go with that. So I'm going to go in with a smaller, softer brush. This is a number one rosemary, uh, Shiraz Long Flat. I need a little bit of turp in there. Okay, not too much. I see some darks coming off of here. More dark, blue, more viridian, more red to knock off the viridian. And we need some darks in here. And we need some darks in here. And here. And up in here. And here, 
and this accents the trees just a little bit. And now I'm going to do some of the lighter color to knock down some of these darks up in here. The soft brush is doing a nice job. And I'm going to get more Ultra and I'm going to add a little bit of Royal Blue up in here. Royal Blue. Looking at the at the uh, image as much as I can and trying to get my inspiration from that. And now you're starting to see some how those trees are accented a little bit more. And I'm going to do more of that. And here and here. Love the blue. And I'll put some of that royal up into these darks here. And that really accents our, our trunks and gives a little bit more life to what's going on. I think I need more dark up in here. Now I'll do some royal over the top of it to start accenting that. Oh, showing up a lot better, isn't it? All right, now we see it needs some really nice yellow green. So let's start with CAD yellow. We're going to get some light viridian, viridian and white. And let's see what this does. I think I need a little bit more yellow. A little bit more yellow. And let's get in here. Got to add just a little bit of... Oh, that was too much. Back to yellow. I put a little bit of um, uh, yellow ochre in it and it just was a little too much. So I knocked it back down with yellow. Oh, this yellow is such a vibrant, fun color in here. It's a little too strong. I'm going to knock it down just a little bit with some blue right here. Knock it down with just a little bit of blue right here. Little bit, not a lot. Try to incorporate it like using two together and make one work with the other to kind of knock it down a little bit. I'm standing back. I think the yellows are working just fine. And I see a pretty good dose of it up in the upper part here. And I like how it works into these darks over in here. And I will bring some over into here. Now I need some vibrant greens. So I'm going to keep these close by on my palette. I, I might be using these pretty again here. And so what I'm going to do is mix that vibrant green mix. So uh, emerald's a good vibrant green. So I'll use emerald, white, emerald, and a little bit of maples, and a little bit of yellow, cad yellow, and I need just a little bit more of emerald. And I think we might be knocking out some greens now. I better stabilize my canvas. Thank you. There's a whole 
menagerie of colors up in here. And it's kind of fun at this stage to have a small brush and be walking through here and just smacking some of this stuff where you see it. And I see some down in here too. Aspen are so vibrant in color. In the summer, in the spring, they're kind of a springy green. In the fall, they're the oranges and yellows. They're just cool to have around. We're lucky to have them in Colorado and out in the Mountain West. And I'll put some down in this area too. So I'm just searching for, I keep looking almost every stroke, I look at what the uh, image can, can show me. Oh, that was kind of a, not so good, okay. And I see some, some good stretches of that over in here. And I see more right in here. Let me get back and make sure I'm not overdoing this. Okay, now I need some darker greens in amongst the light stuff. So I'm going to go emerald, yellow ochre, touch of iridium of ultra blue. Sorry if I was in the overhead camera thing there. And I need these darker touches of subtle dark green and I need a lot up in here too. Oh boy. And I need some down in this area down in here. All right, probably more to do there, and that's up to your taste and mine as to how much more you should do it, but I feel I do need more up in there, but I'm pretty close. So Let's move on to some other neighborhoods in this painting and see what we can do to spruce them up. Okay, so I'm going to go with a uh, number two flat 2025 and I need some drawing stuff done. So I'm going to get some royal, royal. And I need some, some brightness up in here. And I need some, I think, under here. Just a touch. And I need brightening. So let's get some bright. See how I just put the side of it on there and then I just moved it down. And see that nice strong value color that came from it. And then I think we have a landing area that needs some, some pop. And I think we have another leaker over here somewhere. All right, that will work. I have this nice color. I might as well use some of it up down here because I see it on the 
reference here. And I also need some good hunk of darks in there. It's a good art school term, good hunk of darks. Like right in the... Uh, nothing like a viridian and a blue and a red and a brown. I mean, this is some strong stuff. And some good darks up in here. And I need some down here and here and there. Unga. I think some darks at the base of these trees wouldn't hurt either. Say, hey, we're bases. All right, that I think is sufficiently done. Let's get into trees. Okay, so I made this mixture earlier, and I think it's got some promise. So let's go with first a number two, 279. Two, it's kind of a soft brush. It holds a lot of paint. Soft brushes are known for holding more paint. And I'm putting some of that into these areas that need emphasis, which I think it's kind of weak down in some of, some of these areas, and that's why I'm doing it this way. And I'll put some on here too. And I'll put some on here. And here, I think I need some, get some yellow on this guy. I don't know, this is not right yet. So let me squeeze him down just a little bit. A little bit of purple in there. I don't know if I'm really doing him justice. But let me get back to some of this other stuff. Boy, I've got 15 minutes left. Thank you very much. And emphasize some of my trunk of my big tree before I get to the little stuff. Okay. Let's start working on some smaller stuff, smaller branches. This place is full of branches. So I'm going to go to a rigger. Rigger is a, well, it's like a long, long, thin, thin paintbrush. So I've got a number zero rigger, two, seven, three. But I need more paint. Get some paint. So I'm going to go Naples, a little bit of green, some slop white, a little bit more green, and some yellow, and some more white to knock that yellow down, more white. Oh, where did I pick up that? Whew. Sorry, start over. Naples, white. That's too bright. I'm going to bring in a little bit of gray. 
and that is working nicely. And I'll see if that's the trick. All right, all these electronic devices are digging at me. Get a text, and I have a, a ding for text, a different ding for this and that. So I have to get a little bit of Gamsol on here. And if you, it looks so you can just twist it and you have a nice branch going off of here. Aspen are kind of funny with their, their branches. And however, you, I think there's two ways to twirl them, this way and this way. And I use both of them. Both of them. Now, I have light branches and then I have dark branches. And I have some dark mixture here. And I'll work on those dark mixtures next. But I sure need some more stuff up here. And here. And here. And here. I always like to run a nice light through a, a dark background that really shows up. Okay, let's try um, cleaning this brush and getting our rigger out to do some more darks here. And they work pretty good with the darks too. But that one I need to maybe fix up. A lot of darks over in here. And dark ends on the side of this um, guy here. And that, that helps him a little bit. Where are my darks? Here they are. And I'll put some darks at the base of these light limbs where they come out. All right. So, get carried away with your, your, um, your limbs. But riggers are really helpful. And of course, um, my old standby, too, is uh, getting a flexible knife. And uh, this, this is called a connoisseur. Uh, something 10-28. And... It's also great, it's a great tool for getting a, a light on. But uh, the combination of this and uh, the rigger do a pretty good job. All right, so now let me move some of these over to the side and get back to determine what we're going to do next. Because I think in this stage, this is a stage where you do more standing back and looking at it than the previous stages. I'm not doing a very good example of that, but do as I say, not what I do. Oh, this is really, this is really, really great. I'm getting fuzzy up here. I want to try to get that fuzziness away from the side of that tree up there. So, I'm going to get something that's can get in there and do the job. So I'm getting a number two, two seven nine. So I'm going to go into whatever I have 
some dark mixture I have over to the right here. And get some green in there too. Green. So it's not all dark. Light. Branches. See, I can even get some branches off this guy, even with this little brush. I guess you have a little turquoise in there, or a turp in there. some dark in my hand. I like to just accent some joints. And in other words, I'm saying joint, that's where a, uh, you know, a, a, a branch comes off from. And Let's get a little bit more emphasis in our aspen trees. I could put a lot more aspen trees in here. And I don't think it's going to hurt anybody to, to do that. But that's not the right brush to do it. I'm going to accent with a little bit of Naples. And just a little bit of Viridian Light. Some of the lights back in here. There's just some lights going back up in there. And let me see if I'm going to justice. Need some maybe right in here. And here. And, boy, I just don't have enough. I've got a little bit, I think, I squeezed out of there. And we'll get some up in here. And bring some over in the tree. I'm going to knock some of this dark down right there. And maybe soften this dark with a, some of this royal blue I have here. Now i got to put it under the brush. No worries! I'm waiting for that dinger to ding me in my back here and hope I can get a few more strokes and I just love this stage. So the more you look at the reference at this stage, the more you say, hey, there's this. Maybe I could put that in. But, uh, you know, try to guard yourself from getting too overwhelmed with all the little details that are going on in here. And it's exactly what I'm doing right now. But uh, what a joy to work on this. This is just, just feels so lucky. I just didn't know it took so much time to get halfway decent at this endeavor of mine of learning how to paint. You know, I'm still trying to be an overnight success at 24, 25 years at this. I mean, I no way did I do it full time. I think I've been doing it full time for about 15 years. And uh, I just feel very lucky that I have been able to 
do this. Getting some green specks in here. And kind of gives a impression of water. Oh, that really made a difference. Yeah, that did good. Of course, I'll do some more. Okay, timer. How much do I got? One minute. Jeez. All right, thanks so much for being part of this part one, two, and three. Of course, this is part three. If you haven't seen one and two, go ahead and take a look at it. It'll be on YouTube, and then after YouTube, it'll be on my website, georgecall.podia.com. All right, cute little painting. I'm going to make a bigger one from it and uh, try to learn all the stuff that I done from this. I'm going to go bigger this week and do a, a bigger painting. I'll put this one up uh, for sale on my website here in the next week or two. And uh, enjoy the process. This is good stuff. But I need it for a while so I can use it to make my bigger painting, which I will start, I think, tomorrow. Okay. All right, with that, Dinger, don't ding, I'm going to turn you off. Whew, that's seven seconds left. Okay, thanks so much. I'll see you in the next painting. Bye-bye.